here at the Cleveland Museum of Art at a new exhibit, Alex Katz. And we're here with Diana, the, the curator of the Colby Museum of Art. And we have some questions for you. First of all, it's a bold title of the exhibit. Yeah. What's, what's that all about? Uh, well, the title is taken from something Alex himself wrote. He wrote it at the end of the 50s, but I think really looking back on the work he had created over the last 10 years, and his ambitions to do something brand new and terrific had perhaps already been fulfilled yes. by that point. <laughs> that's, that's tough to live up to. And yeah. So new and terrific. That's I would say, though, that it's, it's been his mantra ever since, is to keep finding ways to do something you know, as like we, that. As we come through the rooms, the first room, it seemed a lot of the, uh, the images, the faces were just blurs. There weren't defined faces. Was that... Uh, a, just a progression in his career, or well, that a, is a choice. Yeah, that. So I think in starting to paint figures, one of the things he just he gave himself certain parameters, and he wasn't working for models at that point. Instead, he wanted to leave art school behind. I and mean, if you leave the model behind, then you're really closing the door on art school. So he looked at photographs and really used them to kind of train himself to think very reductively, you know, what is the minimum amount of information that I can put into this composition to make it read. Um, so leaving the small, fine details like the features out was a part of just training his hand and his eye to work quickly um, and, and confidently. You know, I saw his, uh, he's from a Russian immigrant community, but is there any Russian influence in, in his works? Or it doesn't, I didn't see any, but you would... You would... I don't... Um, not that I've ever discerned, no, or that he's admitted to. I'm interested in all the different uh, medium, the collages, the oil, the watercolors. What, what was most, do most artists, don't they stick with a certain style or do they progress like that or? I mean, I think most young artists are kind of, you know, meandering a little bit. So in that, it wasn't totally unusual. The collages were, something he decided to do for practical reasons. He wanted to be able to make some art at night at the kitchen table. <laughs> so um, he realized too that he wanted to, to kind of practice some self-discipline working with things on a really small scale and having to make every element of those collages uh, do, its, do some work. So um, that was when he started doing those in the mid 50s. It was sort of for practical reasons, but then it teaches him things that he continues in the paintings afterwards. Yeah, he's got cutouts mm -hmm. and collages, of linen, all kinds of yeah. things. It's, it's, it's and the masonite was, again, you know, he uses these boards. He paints on boards until the point at which he's decided he wants to paint larger, and then he has to switch to canvas because uh, masonite boards can only you can only get them so so large. And I guess his, it's pretty obvious who his main subject is, Ada, yes. that's his wife, and... Um, his, yes, his wife, and his, his main subject for the rest of his life. So we're lucky to have, you know, the first painting of Ada here that he ever did, which is the one that's uh, on loan from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and um, a number of the others he did in rapid succession once they were married. I really like the... Uh... Ada, Ada, and also the uh, Robert Rauschenberg, the doubles. What's the story between the, the duplicates? Well, I think um, being a little bit um, perverse and uh, you know really wanting to offer a kind of challenge to uh, traditional painting. You know, you think about a portrait; it stands for a figure. It stands in almost as a sort of one for one correspondence and. He, his thinking was, well, that's not the duty of portraiture. It's not, um, it doesn't have to do that. And so if I introduce two of the same figure, it immediately um, sort of ruptures that relationship that you have to a portrait because it, it just, it sort of, you know, it, it bursts it in yeah. a way. Um, so he starts doing two figures and then Eventually, you know, there are as many as six in some wow. paintings by the end of the, by the early 1960s. I also really like the Impala, which is really large. Yeah. And that's, that's a whole nother... Yeah. Well, and 
that, so that's the big leap forward right there. And he's also, at that point, he, one of the things he would do uh, in his spare time was to just go into the movie theaters when he wasn't painting and sit in whatever movie was playing. And he was thinking a lot about the new cinematic technologies, so like Cinemascope the new widescreen technologies, right. the ways that the images were distorted, and the work that you see, like Impala, um, from that uh, slightly later period shows the influence of cinema. So the exhibit opens this weekend, and, and what, what would you tell a typical, someone who comes to the Cleveland Museum of Art fairly regularly to see all the new exhibits? Now, this is a little different. It's, you know, it's, what do you think they're going to take away from this? I mean, I would say that um, they will find things in it that connect to some of the old masters in the European galleries, some of the other American modernists. Um, there's a little bit of everything. There's some sort of Japanese influences by way of someone like Matisse, too. So I think it's a, it actually ties together a lot of um, international collections in the museum. Um, but I think the thing to remember is that if you think you know Alex Katz, you don't know this work at all. Excellent. That's, well, thank you, Diana, from the Colby You're Museum welcome. of Art, and uh, looking forward to seeing the rest of the exhibit. Okay. Thanks, Thanks very much.